Hello there, my name is Chris Hayward. I'm going to take you through what the out of home sector looks like for GB and also how this affects Wales as well. In about 20 minutes, I'm going to take you through some insights taken from our new out of home panel. First thing is, what do we actually collect? We have seven and a half thousand panelists and their task is to tell us about everything that they eat and drink when they are out of home, with one small exception, which is alcohol. They don't tell us about that. We also understand about takeaways when they're consumed in home as well. Our panel has 7,500 panellists that are representative of the smartphone universe, and this looks at people from ages of 13 up to 79. The key thing to note here is that it's a continuous panel. Therefore, whilst there are many out-of-home panels that will tell you about value and potentially number of occasions, a continuous panel allows you to understand if a particular channel or retailer is in growth, why is that? Have people switched across to them or have you just got the same amount of customers but they happen to be buying more? The next few slides help to understand the out-of-home market and shows the growth that some of the categories are actually in. Before we go into that, let's just understand how we collect the data. It's done via an app for both uh, iPhone and for Android. Essentially, if it's a barcoded product, then the panelist scans the barcode. If it's an unbarcoded product like an Apple, there are a series of screens where the panelists will be prompted to record what they have consumed when out of home. Therefore, we understand who has bought what, where, how much they paid for it, whether vouchers were involved, whether it was purchased for someone else, and we now have ad additional capabilities to understand the type of occasion uh, that people are eating and consuming for and the needs that they're eating for as well. So let's have a quick look and get into some data. The first thing to notice is it's a huge market, £47 billion across, uh, across GB. When we look at who's doing what, we can understand that the majority of people, so we've got 97 or 98 percent in Wales, are actually eating out of home at least once uh, in a year. We generally do it around five times a week uh, and we generally spend around four pounds when we're actually doing it. So we can break each individual trip size down and later on we're going to understand is it younger or older people that are spending more and who are those people and what else are they doing? Year on year, we're seeing quite a lot of growth within the out-of-home market. So to the end of 2016 in grocery, the market was pretty much flat, whereas for out-of-home, it was growing at around 4.5%. Wales is growing through premiumisation and trip sizes, and we're also seeing a huge amount of premiumisation in this market as well. If we start to break down the out-of-home market, we can see that formal meals are a huge part of this. And I'll go on to talk about this for Wales because this is more so uh, within, this, within this area of GB. Drinks is a key category and we'll look at how coffee is important. Quick meal markets, including savoury snacks and confectionery. Confectionery actually doing better in Wales than it is overall um, and snack items in slight decline. When we break down um, and look at quick meals, sandwiches dominates and has been a growth market. We also know that salad, salads and sushis offer, offer opportunities within Wales. When we look at confectionery and crisps, snacks and nuts, we know that this is a challenging area, but we also know that Wales does particularly well within confectionery. Coffee is a hero category, not just in GB, but in Wales too. And we've seen where businesses have implemented coffee as a key growth driver. It really has started to turbocharge their business. So if we think of quick service restaurants who maybe 10 or 15 years ago, co coffee wasn't such a big deal. Now it's, an, it's a go-to product for them and also helps to convert shoppers into their store and also helps them get into more meal occasions. With the exception of vending machines, we know that each out-of-home channel takes around a billion pounds over the course of the year. And as I said, Pubs and bars are really important in Wales. When we start to break that down, we can have a look and see that in the fourth bar, the darker green, we can see how disproportionately important pubs and bars are for Wales versus uh, the rest of the GB. We can also understand that it's formal meals that are pushing this value as well. So it really seems like the Welsh consumer uh, really buys into those pub meals more so than anyone else in GB. So who is it? So we often talk about millennials and baby boomers and Generation X, and we can see from this chart what their behaviour actually is. In Wales, we can see that the millennials and Generation X actually spend less per head than they do in GB, but it's the baby boomers that are really driving the growth in Wales. 
The reason for this is millennials and Generation X tend to buy into either cheaper categories or cheaper outlets, whereas the baby boomers are more likely to go into the full service uh, restaurants as opposed to maybe quick serve or um, sandwich shops or the casual dining, which has a, has a lower price per ticket. So channels have got clear um, areas of distinction uh, from our data, but equally, if you are a main meal provider, if you're a full service restaurant and you only do one or two things, it's quite difficult to grow. Where we've seen growth is where differing retailers are offering different occasions to shoppers. So quick service restaurants, getting into coffee and getting into breakfast is a clear way and a clear strategy of actually getting to more people via more occasions and increasing your value and your volume. So when we look at bakery and sandwich shops, we can understand who is doing what. And we know that people buying coffee with something else is really important. So we know that 32% of trips include a hot drink when someone goes to sit to a bakery or, or coffee shop, whereas in Wales, that's around 41%. 20% of quick service restaurant trips include a hot drink. That's slightly more in Wales too. And finally, coffee shop trips, including a quick meal, is higher in Wales than it is in GB. The point of this is there are thousands of stores to choose from. And to be able to stand out from the crowd, you've got to have an offering that is both reflective and compelling for the consumer. So as I've already alluded to, if you're going to grow, there are about four growth levers that you can, you can pull. So the first one is to get new stores, and we've seen Costa increase dramatically over the last few years. New occasions, so that might be, I normally sell things at lunch, could I sell things at breakfast? It could be weekend versus weekday. It could be an occasion type. So a good example of this is Pizza Hut are now uh, introducing cocktail bars into their restaurants to get the millennial trade in the evening. Loyalty is key, so we're seeing many, many loyalty cards or something that you and some kind of app that will get you returning uh, to stores. And finally, trip spend. So what we've seen both in take-home grocery and out of home is premiumization of markets. Not particularly maybe a bigger volume occasion, but certainly something where you can indulge and trade up. Coffee is a key area in this, and I'm going to spend a few slides just taking you through how coffee has grown and who is doing what. In Great Britain, 72% of out-of-home hot beverage spend is on coffee, only 17% on tea. Wales shows a similar dynamic, and Welsh consumers are opting for a slightly cheaper uh, out-of-home coffee. The out-of-home coffee market is worth about 6.2 billion. It's showing nearly 9% growth compared to around 4.5% out-of-home. So it's a really, really key uh, product to get people into store for. And we're seeing that actually people drink over 3.7 billion coffees a year. That's a huge amount. As coffee grows, we can see that the channels it operates in are changing as well. Coffee is available in many differing outlets and the competition will continue to evolve. So it's not just about coffee shops and bakeries. We're seeing many of the multiple grocers offer, have a coffee offering. We're seeing an easy coffee shop. We've already referenced quick serve restaurants. We're looking at Greg's, who are very much looking into that casual dining aspect. And we're even seeing Starbucks starting to sell craft beer and wine. The coffee market is reliant on some extremely heavy shoppers. More than one in 20 of us buy the category more than 300 times a year. So depending on how many of you are watching this video, I'm sure one of you is one of them. The heaviest shoppers are not necessarily the connoisseurs. We know that the heaviest shopper is the, firmly that of the older male and they're unlikely to be buying in the main coffee shops. We know that it's a fast growing and dynamic part of the out of home market. And as more channels recognize the strategic opportunities that coffee provides, is your business ready and well placed to capitalize? I'm gonna take you through a little uh, section now looking at how shoppers are changing their behavior. So in summary, Coffee is a fast-growing and dynamic part of the out-of-home market. More and more channels are recognising the strategic importance. Coffee is a fast-growing and dynamic part of the out-of-home market, and it's critical that outlets get their offering right. One of my key considerations has been how hotels and restaurants look to offer coffee. We see many, many people going to coffee shops either for a relaxation or a social event, but also for business meetings as well.
If hotels and restaurants start to improve their offering here, then could they get into more opportunities and more occasions to help drive volume and value? It's a really important period for out-of-home sales and lunchtime trade is underperforming as well. We've seen blurring of lines as to when people are eating and those three square meals a day really does seem to be a thing of the past. And what we're seeing is that morning consumption of products is actually up 9%, whereas the traditional lunchtime of 12 till 2 is slightly down. So we also know that shoppers are being a bit more considered at lunch and they're indulging more in the mornings, but that leads you to think, well, what else are they doing in the evenings? Evenings and evening meals is around about a 13 billion pound market. As you would imagine, it's driven by meals and dominated by quick service restaurants and full service restaurants. And we see that the QSRs are in some pretty good growth. We're also seeing premiumization is key as both price per item and items per trip increase year on year. So as shoppers begin to change their behaviours, is your portfolio well placed to capitalise on the growth of out of home consumption? Are you ahead of the trend or are you following on the tailwind? So it's our considered view that food service will continue to grow and some trends will continue into 2017. So we think that venues will either broaden variety or specialise. We also think takeaways will continue to grow. Confidence is a key thing here. And what we often see if confidence is lower, that people go back to what they know. So traditional menus and things that they're familiar with are going to be key. We also know that food tech is changing with the way that we engage with takeaways. If you think about how we're ordering them now, we can do it via laptop, we can do it via tablet, we can do it via online. The ways we can get our food delivered is ever evolving. Millennials will grow up, but are they, become, are they going to become wealthier? That's one to watch. So we know that out of home has changed rapidly, but there may well be a long-term shift as well. Thanks very much for watching.